Hey guys, Too Legit City here, and today we're going to be going over my Crab Shack design. This Crab Shack design is really just to hold the Poke Shells in a somewhat efficient manner, and to make it so that my duplicates do not get beat up by the angry Poke Shells. Now, let's start this off by talking about the Poke Shells, what they do, and the benefits of having them. Typically, Poke Shells are going to be the best source of lime as you get lime from the egg shells and from the Poke Shell mode after death and from the baby to adult evolution. That's three different instances of getting lime and that's better than just getting eggs from any other critter in the game. That being said, the Poke Shells have a weird diet where they eat polluted dirt and the rot piles. Of course, they also excrete sand after eating that polluted dirt and rot pile. Now, that in and of itself is really nice for the water sieve, as both of those things is exactly what the water sieve needs. The water sieve creates polluted dirt and needs to be fed sand. The pokey shell eats polluted dirt and creates sand, so they're basically a match made in heaven. Now, the one thing with this is that the Poke Shells do not have one to one turnover, meaning that you are going to lose a little bit of the mass, which means you will have to slowly but surely add a little bit more sand a little bit at a time. However, if you have a lot of rotting food and or rot piles, you'll be able to add that into the system if you so choose to so that you get a little bit more sand. That being said, that's the reasoning why we have a auto sweeper in the room so that we could always pick up the sand wherever they poop it out and then either put it to the bin or to the water sieve. This makes it so that we do not need duplicate access. Also, we have the deodorizer right here, which also needs sand because the polluted dirt may off gas and so we want to clean that up if we can. That's also going to be dealt with, with the auto sweeper. Now, there's one thing about this design that I haven't touched on yet, and it's that this design actually includes an anti-cramping mechanism. As you guys may see, the amount of space in this room is very small, it's only about 30 tiles. The 30 tiles typically is not enough, especially when you have 7 critters. Critters typically need anywhere between 9 to 12 tiles of space individually, which is dependent on the type of critter it is. But you guys can tell that these guys are overcrowded as they have the debuff. Now that's where the wild ranching of these guys comes into play. Nothing matters for wild critters because they will always lay one egg regardless of if they're happy or not. But the one thing that will stop them from laying an egg, especially if they're wild, is if they are cramped. The cramped debuff happens when you have an egg in the room and that egg gives them the debuff if there's not enough space for that egg to hatch and be comfortable. So the egg is actually what triggers the cramped debuff. So what we do is we auto sweep the egg and we deliver that to the top left. Now of course that's all we deliver over here all of the pokey shells if they do lay an egg so that they don't become angry the egg gets removed to a separate room which is these two tiles now when that happens we're going to be worried about what happens to the pokey shell do we wrangle the pokey shell from here to here how does the eggs actually get back to the bottom with sandbox mode on now we're going to show you exactly how the door setup works for the anti-cramping mechanism. We're going to select a Poke Shell spawn and simulate what would happen if the Poke Shell spawn were to hatch. So, we will show you everything after the fact, but the system is as shows. As soon as a critter hatches, the door kicks on, he walks over, and then he gets body slammed into the ground, just like that. Now, of course, this only works for critters that do not fly as when the door closes on the critter they will actually be able to fly in place and not drop it will work for pips dracos any critter that doesn't fly and paku technically if there is water in this room as the pakus are attracted to water and will try to flop in if they can 
but that is the anti-cramping mechanism. Because the egg is in a separate room, none of the Poke Shells are angry or cramped, and when the Poke Shell spawns, he will easily be able to wander in and fall down into the bottom. Here's the automation overlay, it's very simple, all you have to do is have a critter center in the small room space and have a automation to the pneumatic door. And on the critter sensor, it is set to above zero with only counting critters. Now, how the door mechanism works, when you have a critter up top, they're actually able to walk on top of doors. But if a critter is in a falling motion, they will fall through a pneumatic door just like an item would. And that is the anti-cramping mechanism with the crab shack design. This is a nice and easy way to stockpile all your Poke Shells together and of course make use of their dietary options, which is polluted dirt and rot piles by having them next to the water sieve. Hope you guys enjoyed this design. And of course guys, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.